back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Um, today we're going to be working on embroidery and um, we're going to be using a special hoop that is called the 5 by 12 prepositional hoop. This hoop is usually used on the machines that are single needles and that uses a 5 by 7 hoop. And what this does is does allow you to embroider a larger size. So I picked a design to demonstrate how it's done. And yeah, and you need a software. Um, this is Embrilliance Essentials, and it does allow me to do this. Um, um, you really need a software. I don't know if there's another one. Um, I don't know if Sower Pro allows you to do the same thing. I think it does. But yeah, you cannot do this without a software because the software is the one who has the capability of switching the hoop size. Okay, so let's do this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to my file. I'm going to look for the file. Just follow the cursor. I'm going to open it up. I already have my USB with the design inside. I transfer the design from my downloads. Okay. So I'm going to be looking for the file. First, I'm going to show you how it's going to be looking like once uh, is done so that you have a reference of comparing this with a regular hoop. So this is already the one that I did up here. You follow the cursor. It says um, split design and I label it Amor, which is love in Spanish. I'm going to click it and I'm going to open it. If you notice a hoop that is different, right? It has three little, um, it has like three areas, but it's really like one big one started from here, which is the top part. And then this other part that starts from this other corner and goes around. So the whole design measures, you follow the cursors up here, 11 and one fourth uh, in width. And the height is four inches, uh, four and three quarter inches. Okay. So then I'm going to close it. I'm going to tell you how easy that I converted it. Okay. I don't want to do any changes. So let's go back to the file. I'm going to look for it again. This time I'm going to look for the file itself so that I can show you how to do it. Let's look for this one. This is the larger size. I'm going to open it up. Um, this is the different coloring. And this is the original colors that came the file with, but I switched them. That's why you saw the one that I showed you earlier has different colors on it. I switched them. So this one is approximately around eight inches in length and two inches in height. A little bit, a little bit over, but about that, right? So I want it to be at least 11 inches wide and at least four height. Even if you decide to leave this one this size, it will not fit a five by seven. It's still larger, right? So in order for me to do this, I'm gonna switch it to the 12, uh, five by 12 hoop. So follow the cursor up here. You're gonna click in here, which is preferences. And if you notice here, it's in DST because the file is on a DST. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to change it to a PES because my brother machine files needs to be on PES. So I'm going to go down, roll down, and click PES. So it's this shit, right? Once I do this, I'm going to go to my right. If you notice here, it says it's under a normal hoop. But we're going to choose multi-position, and you're going to click in there. And it gives me four choices. So once I choose this one right here, which is the jumbo hoop, I'm going to rotate it because I know I'm going to need to rotate it because it's a longer um, hoop and it's going to be coming on vertical. I want it horizontally. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to apply and say, okay. And you see, now I have it um, the way I want it with the special hoop right here. Now, what we can do is we're going to make it larger. So I'm going to just grab a corner and just keep making it the size that I want. And 
and I have right here that is at 11, okay? You notice here it's 11, and then it has three and a half inches tall. I can make it bigger if I want it, like taller. In other words, not bigger, taller. But I don't want to do that because you see how it changes the dimensions of the flower, and I don't want that. So I'm going to go back to the way it was. But it is 11 inches wide. And I can even make it a little bit bigger. If you want an 11 and a half, go for it. 11 and a quarter. Um, you have up to maybe 11 and a half because the hoop is 12 inches. And you don't want it to be too close to the hoop, right? So just, you know, don't take it more than 11 and a half. I will say 11 and one quarter. But anywho, this is the way you do it, okay? And what happened is that um, when you do this, um, it splits the design in two parts. First, what it's going to do in the embroidery machine is it's going to embroider this part right here. The whole thing. When it's done with this, you're going to take the hoop off the machine and you're going to move it higher to the, uh, to the other position because this hoop comes with four holes that you move over. It's the set of two in here, and the, in here, and a set of two in here. And I know it's difficult to visualize it, but don't worry, because I'm gonna show you once we go to the machine, the way you're gonna move the hoop, okay? So first, like I said, first it's gonna embroider this part, and then it's gonna go, and gonna start embroider this part, all right? Whatever is left of this part, okay? So that is the way you do it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take you to the machine and um, I'm going to show you how it's done, okay? So I'm going to close in here and I'm not going to make any changes because it's not. this is not the one that I'm going to be using. This is the one that I'm, we're going to be working with. It came very big, you see? And you see how I switched the colors? And another thing, I added this extra thing. This is my addition. Um, I used uh, this font that I love a lot. Um, and I added this because this originally didn't come with it. Um, so if you already own a machine, you know how you do to add um, the extra whatever design or word. And that's what I did. If you have a um, question about how to do this, all you have to do is let me know in the description box and I can make a video on how to um, make your own design added to the file that you have already. And also how to change the colors if you don't know how to change the colors. But that is um, something that I had to do separate because, it, you know, I don't have time to do it today. But I will be um, glad to explain you how I did all the switching of the color for those who are beginners and are thinking of, you know, getting an embroidery machine or for those who have a machine and it's still on the box and have it taken it out of the box, um, guys, go ahead, take those machines out of the boxes and start using them, okay? Um, believe me, it's not as difficult as it looks, okay? Um, it's a lot of fun. So once you're done with this, all you're going to do is save it the same way you save any other file, and then it's going to appear as a split design. All right, so guys, um, this is the end of the explanation when it comes to the software and the file. And now we're going to move to the machine, okay? So I already hooped the shirt. I hooped it the uh, normal way as opposed to floating because this is a very wide design. And when I tried to float it, it was kind of difficult to open the shirt up. Um, you are embroidered. You know how to hoop, floating, or regular. So I'm not going to go through the hooping because, um, you know, if you are doing this step of embroidering larger, you know how to hoop uh, a, um, a shirt or a garment, okay? If you are new to the channel and you want to know how to hoop, um, you can go back to my videos. Um, I have videos that show exactly step by step on how to hoop this uh, large hoop and on how to hoop the regular uh, machine hoop. I am talking about the SC1900, but this does apply to any other single needle and flatbed embroidery machine, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and move um, to the machine. I'm going to place it on, oh, and I wanted to show you, this is the difference on this hoop, okay? Regular hoop has only two, smaller, only two holes to um, place it on the uh, embroidery machine. This one has four, because you're going to use two sets first, and then you're going to 
move it over when you're done with one side and move it um, to these other two or whatever order that your design starts, okay? Um, this will apply to other embroidery machines. And of course, the hoops are gonna be different because when you buy it, you buy it depending on the style of machine that you have. And this part might be different, but the reason is the same. You're gonna have more than the normal um, hooking areas, okay? So I'm gonna take you to the embroidery machine right now, okay? Okay, so um, we are here in the machine. Um, if you hear a buzzing um, background noise, that's the furnace. Um, we are very cold today, so my heater is going crazy, if you hear it, okay? So, um, I'm gonna show you um, the way that I'm going to hook this. I already have the design on the screen, and I'm gonna show you the way that it's going to appear. So we are in the regular um, screen, right? So let's say I'm going to start looking for my design. I'm gonna go here. And it's gonna just um, read my USB, which I have the design on. It's taking its time. All right, so I'm um, depending on which one your machine is, you're either gonna go right or left. I'm gonna go ahead and keep going fast because I know mine is at the end. Okay, I passed it. All right, so if you notice, there are two files in here, okay? So I'm gonna choose to start with this one. Actually, I'm gonna choose to start with this one. Why? Because, so the way my design is gonna be, is gonna go here like this, because these are the hooking areas. So this is my machine. So I'm gonna choose the one who start with the uh, ends with the B and E, which is this one right here. It might change because I still gonna have to probably turn it around, but let's see how it looks like. So anywho, I'm gonna choose this, I'm gonna go set, and if you notice, it's upside down. It's facing that way. But my shirt is gonna face going this way. So I'm gonna rotate, all right? I'm gonna rotate, and it's gonna be 90 degrees. So now it looks more like what I want, okay? So I'm gonna go okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and place the hoop, and I'm gonna start with the top part, these two right here, which are this part in here. I'm gonna hook it here, okay? I'm gonna switch you around so that you can see what I'm doing. gonna be kind of tricky because there's a lot of fabric in here to get it through all right and if you're wondering what is this right here these are on um, the thread hoggers that I use for my thread to hold the thread like this one but I use it also to hold my fabric in a lot of um, projects makes it a little bit easier for me to keep it away and if you notice, this is a design that I use just to center mine. But in this case, it's gonna really matter the centering because um, it's gonna do whatever it's gonna do. I use it when I trace because actually the center is not gonna be the middle because in the first file, the center is gonna be this one right here. Okay, this one. It's not gonna really be the middle of the whole thing but I like it because I know that when I trace, I'm not gonna hit the hoop or anything like that. And then I will take it off, okay? So this is the center on this part of the file. So the first step that's gonna happen is gonna, it's gonna embroider only this part, all right? So the first thing that I'm gonna ask you to do before you trace, make sure you have clearance on the back of the machine because this is a larger um, hoop, right? So, um, just make sure that you have clearance that you're not gonna hit the wall. Um, um, one time I forgot that and it hit the back wall. So um, what you can do is just move your table or whatever like away, okay? To make sure that you don't hit anything in the back, okay? 
So I'm gonna go ahead and start the tracing, okay? So everything is clearing out of course you know this is on the way which a little bit annoying but once the um, machines start um, embroidering on this area I need to make sure that this is all the way away from the and you know if you're embroidering what I mean by that okay of course also make sure that the shirt is clearing and it's not under the hoop all right, just make sure that it's clearing that it's not under the hoop. All right. So now that it cleared, I'm going to take this off. I don't need it anymore. Because if it clears now, I know that for the second um, file, it's going to clear also. So I'm not going to clear. All right. So once I do this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go, um, okay. And then I'm gonna both go to embroidery. And what it's gonna do is gonna take me my um, to the colors. And you're going to find this box in here. You don't need to follow that box in there. Um, in order to get rid of it, um, this is like a darn like a, um, outline that it, it, it adds to it. Um, and you can take it off later because it's just a regular stitching, and you just take it off. But I don't want that, so I'm gonna go here under this area or well, then minus and the plus I'm going to push that and I'm going to go plus meaning I'm going to jump that step so I'm going to go plus it has like a little icon of the um, uh, thread spool and I'm going to go okay have you noticed it disappeared okay and then it's going to embroider the first part of the design okay um so let's start it's going to take a little while to embroider okay so because it's a all filled um stitches so um, i'm gonna lower this and i'm gonna start embroidering okay again i'm ensuring before i start again that i'm clearing everything up all right and i'm gonna push start this is a white thread is doing the V first. So now it's time for me to switch the thread to the color red, okay? All right.
trying to keep this thread away from everything. So now we're gonna start the next part, okay? Right now what he's doing is that he's embroidering the border. So this one is done and it's gonna move to the next letter. So I'm gonna switch the um, thread to white again and I will see you uh, in a little bit, okay? Once I'm done. So I switched the thread, we're gonna go to the letter E now. So now I made the last switch of the red color. We're gonna do the border for the E and yeah, okay. So let's get started. Pretty much it's just gonna be the same thing that you saw on the last letter, the B. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward um, this part so that we can get to the next color, which is gonna be the black thread. And that color will be embroidering the um, that section of this um, file one. I made them file one and then the next one is gonna be file two. Okay?
Okay, so we are done with the red part. And now what we're gonna do next is um, embroider the wording that goes under these two letters. And that's gonna be in black and it's gonna be in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch the thread to black and I will see you in a little bit, okay? Okay, so we are here. We're gonna start with this part and let's get started, people. Okay, people, so we are done with this file. So if you notice in the screen, it acted like this was the only, like a normal file, like I'm done with everything. But of course we know that we are not done with everything. So we're gonna do, okay, it's finished. It's done, right? And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna look for the other file. Um, so before we do this, we're going to um, take off the um, hoop because I'm going to move it from positioning so this is the perfect time right now before I move it from the position to the next position that I'm going to um, show you. This is the perfect time to shake your bobbin, okay? Because remember, remember that the next, um, you know, that it's better if you don't have to switch in the middle and take the hoop again, especially this big hoop um, in the middle of the embroidery. And also because the next part is going to be a larger file. So as of now... I have this amount of bobbing, okay? Let me put you in the screen while oh, I took it off. Um, this amount of bobbing, I just took it off, and to me, this is too close for call, so i rather place a new one, and I don't have to worry for the rest of the embroidery. I started practically with a new one, all right? So hopefully, this one will be enough for the rest of everything that is left. Um, but, you know, that is a suggestion that I have, you know, um, especially on this kind of um, design that is all field embroidery and it takes a lot of thread. Um, if your design is more simpler and you think that you're not going to need to change it, it's, you know, then, you know, it's, it's your judgment depending on the size. This is a big design and it has a lot of stitches. So it's better to be safe and you don't have to be worried about, um, you know, having to switch things. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get out of here. And I'm going to look for the next file. So I'm going to um, go here. And I say, yes, I'm done. So I'm starting all over. All right. So now what I have to do is look for the file again. I'm going to start at the end because I know that it's at the end. So we did this one already, right? Now we're going to be working on this one. We're going to choose that one. I'm going to go set. And again, I had to rotate. You see how it went this way? You have to make sure that it's going to embroider the way you have your hoop in the machine. So I'm going to go again, rotate, and I'm going to rotate 90 degrees. And this is the beginning. All right? 
So now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to hoop it up again. All right. And this time, let me make you uh, further back because I need to show you. So I'm going to be moving the camera further away. So if you noticed, we started with these two holes in here. We're going to go further down and we're going to now um, place the hoop using these two. All right. in place I don't need to trace this one because we trace in the beginning and um, everything cleared out so I'm not concerned about the second part clearing out um, at all I know I have enough space in the hoop especially when my design is 11 and the hoop goes all the way to um, 12 let me take, get rid of this thread in here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to switch the thread to... Um, oh, let me fill that in here. So now that the hoop is in place, I'm going to say, okay. I'm going to go to... Um, I mean, you can trace it, but, you know, you don't need to. I'm going to go just trace it so you can see how it looks, okay? I'm going to trace. But it's going to trace fine because the first one traced fine. And um, you see I have enough space in the bottom part, you know, spacing here and no issues. All right? And the next step, you're going to say it's okay. And then you're going to go ahead and embroider. And it's going to give you the order of the thread that you're going to be using. So guys, remember what we did in the beginning for the first file? Then there was... Uh, First with the black with the box in here and that you don't need to do that. And we went to this needle and click it and then um, look for the icon in the bottom that looks like a, a thread spool. And then it, said it has a plus in it. That is to jump that step. So I already did it um, and I didn't record it, but just, you know, do the same thing with it in the first file. Go here, click this, look for the little icon with the thread spool that has a plus in it. Click it and it will jump and eliminate that step. So we're starting on the white one already. I already changed the thread to white. And I'm going to move you around so that you can have a better look because this one is on the top and you won't be able to see this. So I'm going to move you around. So we're going to start this. So basically, we're going to do the same steps that we did on the first file that we worked on. Right. So I'm going to fast forward all this part um, and you're going to see only some parts of it and I will see you in the next part when I need to change the thread, okay, to the red color. I'm going to go ahead and change the thread to red and I'll see you in a little bit, okay?
we have two more colors to go and um, we should be okay so I'm gonna start this part and uh, we'll see you when it's done all right This is the last part of the embroidery and sh we should be done after this. Well, people, we are finally done. So I'm gonna take it off the hoop and show you the final results. See you in a little bit. Okay, so this is um, the embroidery. It came out beautiful. Of course, it's a little bit wrinkle on the top and on the bottom because I had it all punched up. So all I had to do next is just cutting off the cutaway stabilizer around. After I'm done with this, all I'm going to do is place a tender touch in the back to cover the back end to um, make it softer to the skin. I'm not going to include that because you have seen me already. Um, you have seen me before doing that. Um, if you have any questions, if you're new to the channel, um, you can click to my embroidery um, content and you'll see me placing tender tush um, in the back of the shirts and hoodies, okay? So I'm going to see you at the end once I um, cut all of this off. And of course, you know that I use my dot yield scissors to cut the stabilizer, okay? So I'll see you at the end, people, all right? After I'm done doing this, okay? See you in a little bit, people. So guys, I am done doing everything and I am happy with the result. I, it's beautiful. Um, so yeah, so I wanted to show you how to embroider larger using the um, 5 by 12 hoop. And so I just wanted to let you know that it's, it's doable. This is the 5 by 12 hoop. All right, the design is 11 inches wide. And I think it was four, 4 inches tall. I hope you like this content. I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, yeah, it's... Um, Took a long time because it's a single needle machine. I'm used to the multi-needle, um, but it's a very easy file to follow. Um, if you have any question on the whole process, again, you can ask me those questions down on the um, description box, or you can watch my other videos that I've done in the past using this hoop. I have one, I have two of them, where it's just straight um, embroidery like that one, and I have one that I did a um, applique on it. So if you're new and you like this content, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, The Crafty Puerto Rican, and don't forget to click the notification bell so that you will be notified of all my future videos. And also, don't forget to share it. Go ahead to share to people that you know that like this kind of content. Um, don't forget to click the thumb up in your, on your way out because that will really help uh, grow my channel and, and being shown more on YouTube. So I just want to remind you that I started my own private Facebook group. It's called the Crafty Puerto Rican Hub. 
It gives the opportunity that if you to do crafting, no matter if it's not embroidery, any other kind of crafting, you can share and, you know, ask questions, especially if you're new. Um, when I started embroidery, I learned a lot through um, a Facebook group, and it helped me to answer every question that I have about embroidery. So it's very important that if you're new to join these kind of groups. Mine is called the Crafty Puerto Rican Hub. So guys, thank you for spending this time with me. I will see you soon. Bye-bye. Hasta luego.